This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. Amplified. Welcome back to another episode of Black and Privileged in America podcast. Power, love, and money conversations relevant to black people. Sponsored by Infinite Resources. I'm your host, Abana Sankofa. Catch Black and Privileged in America podcast now on Anchor, the Amplified DSM YouTube channel, on our social media platforms, and on our very own platform, www.amplifieddsm.com. Well, hello, listeners and friends. This is the season finale of Black and Privileged in America. Can you believe it? We're wrapping up another season. I'm here. I've asked Abraham to sit in with me so that we can take you on a journey through the heart and soul of our incredible conversations. So I'd like to introduce to some of you, well, probably most of you, I mean, you've probably heard me talk to Abraham and about him, uh, but he's in front of the camera today. So let's welcome Abraham. <laughs> yeah, uh, in front, it feels weird. <laughs> and I was just thinking, I've we've done this before, you know, many times, but now being on the on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's just I don't know. It's I'm a little nervous. You're nervous. Oh my god! And I've done this so many times, but <laughs> I don't know. Well, hopefully we can disarm those nerves yeah. because you are uh, the 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 mastermind here and the guy who makes all of the the wheels go around. You and Courtney are an amazing team. So I just want to say up front, thank you so much for. Um, uh, being here and making this all possible because it's you and Courtney that that do the heavy lifting. Oh yeah, for sure. Courtney, Courtney's a big help. Um, and I feel honored. Thank you, Ivana, because uh, you know when you first asked me, I'm like I was reluctant at first because <laughs> somebody else had act- asked me, and I'm like, man, like I don't know if they were being serious or or if they were just kidding. So no, yeah, I I feel really honored. Oh. I really do. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you. So you. Much. You're welcome, and thank you. I just want to say, you know, this is a team effort. Oftentimes with podcasts and other productions, you know, people only see who is in front of the camera or they hear the voice on the microphone. But it right. takes an entire team to make this possible. And I just wanted all of the Black and Privileged listeners to know that hey, we've got this incredible team out here. So right. And then one funny thing about that is, like, as far as, like, production, anything production, um, people only get noticed if something goes wrong or, yeah. you know, something oh goes yeah. bad and then all fingers are pointed, you know. So, it, but a- if everything is running smoothly, you know, like, <laughs> you know. Yep, no one notices the <laughs> no. good stuff. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like customer service. You know when something is wrong because everybody's going to flip out, but yeah. no one says anything when things are going well. <laughs> but we're going to change that. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to kind of reminisce over our our um, episodes that we've had this season. Mm-hmm. And this is the first season that we've worked together. I'm so glad yeah. that, that you came on board and then Courtney came later. Yeah. And so it's just really taken us to the next level. So I thought in our final episode of season three, yeah. we would go down memory lane. Nice. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, well, because your first episode was with the uh, with the two students, right? Yep, yep, yep. We did a welcome back episode, but it kind of like is like five minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> because before um, before season three, I was a duo. There was a duo. This right. show was hosted by myself and Jay Vodun. Right. And we lost Jay, right. which was totally fine. Sometimes people pivot and do things differently, which is totally fine. I think it's okay to change the game. Um, so we came back season three with a with a welcome episode, uh, me solo, and it worked out really well. But yeah, the first uh, guests we had were Dominique Burton and Tayshawn Presswood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were two students. Um, who had gone through a summer CNA program through the county hospital here in Des Moines, Broadlands. Broadlands, yeah. Yeah, and they um, they were going through like this healthcare professional development thing, and they fell in love with healthcare. Right. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was kind of so dope to see young people um, really set their minds on a career path so soon. So soon, yeah. Yeah. So I checked in with Dominique and with Tayshawn. Nice. Dominique is in her senior year in high school, and she is working in the healthcare industry after school. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, actually, I could believe it because yeah. she's very driven, very purposeful, and I'm so proud of her. Yeah. And Tayshawn uh, has completed his first semester of college at the University of Iowa. At Iowa, right. Yeah, med school. Wow. First semester? First semester. Dang. And he's like just going <laughs> they're thriving both of them are thriving that's good um in their studies that's and exciting yeah it really is i can't wait to check in with them later as they progress in their in their paths and stuff yeah for yeah. sure yeah and i i uh we ask every guest to recommend a book right and so they recommended books and that's another thing before i share the books that they recommended uh we have compiled a list of 36 books that have been recommended this season. And so that's all going to be included in the show notes, like author and title for every single guest. Nice. Yeah. So people can go out and look at that black and privileged in America book list and, <laughs> and build their libraries. Right. <laughs> so the book that, Oh, for the welcome back episode, I recommended my own book. Yeah. Yeah. Some you of the books to. I brought. Yeah. I got to, right. <laughs> yeah. I recommended Omari's big tree and the mighty Jim Bay written by me it's a children's story so it's available everywhere are you still doing like um like book tours at libraries and stuff well my tour officially ended uh in october okay because it was it's been like a year and a half and i was on book tour <laughs> <laughs> i'm like this was the longest book tour in, in Keep the world the party going heck yeah <laughs> so it officially ended in october but i still do appearances and readings for kids as a matter of fact i have one on sunday where i'll be reading to some children in valley junction nice yeah so that's that one and then for the uh, episode with Tayshawn and Dominique, right. they had some really cool book recommendations. Tayshawn recommended The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which I don't have a copy of. Mm. But Dominique recommended Sex and Race mm. by Joel A. Rogers. Now, listen, this is a this is a heavy book for a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the book that she recommended. I happen to have a copy of volume two nice. of that book. So, yeah. Then we moved on to Talk 14, the Montgomery Brawl. Do you remember that? Oh, right. Yeah, um, we had Madison Ray, Madison Ray and Ryan Christopher as our guests. And they yeah. were talking to us about the Montgomery Brawl. Yeah. So for those of you who don't remember, over the summer 2023 in Montgomery, Alabama, there was this fight that broke out because uh, a boat worker uh got off the boat and went to the dock and asked these guys to move their boats so that the other boat could park, something like that. Right, right. And a fight broke out. Yeah. And it was highly racialized yeah. in the media, especially not even in the media, but in in context, the context of our country. It was really interesting that this fight broke out between um, some white people mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of black folks. Yeah. And I think the black folks won. <laughs> I think so. Culturally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was W. I just read yesterday that uh, they got charged uh, finally. Yeah. The, right? Yeah. And then all charges were dropped for the guy who had the folding chair, the brother with the folding chair. <laughs> I even got cupcakes made with many folding chairs on top, and I keep the folding chairs in my office just to remind me that I'm strong. Right? I can do this. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but um, it was great having Ryan and um, Madison on with us because what they did, they kind of helped us um, uh, they helped us unpack the cultural implications of right. that brawl. I mean, the media coined the the conflict between those groups as a brawl, but mm -hmm. we decided to call it the riverfront resistance. Yeah, you know, because there's a history in that city of resistance and standing up for yourself if right. you're black and making sure that your humanity is asserted and respected. So, right. I feel like that was just an extension of history. Yeah, that for moment. Sure. Yeah. It was great. Oh yeah, it was great. And then Ryan and Madison are just hilarious. Oh yeah, their <laughs> their input, and that, that's the thing because it's hard, especially to come on a, on a show like this and and be completely, um, like genuine yeah. or you know very honest, and even like some of the topics that you you do and and have have people come on. It's like man, Ivan is Ivan is a freaking badass man. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you. Let's drink to that. Okay, <laughs> here we go. We've got wine to celebrate the end of the season, but we're celebrating compliments. We're celebrating everything. Yeah. Yes. New year. New year New coming. New season. Absolutely. Very nice. There you go. Courtney, I got one for you, too. 
<laughs> she said she'll take it. So here we go. There's for Courtney and here's for me. If I'm a badass, then we're all badasses. <laughs> How about that? I'll, cho- I'll choose that. <laughs> all right, here we go. Salute. Tink, tink. Here Salute. we go. We're drinking to being a badass. <laughs> Pinot Grigio, that's good. All right, great. Very nice. So the books that Ryan and Madison recommended, Madison is reading, he was reading The Efficient Hustle. Um, I don't have a copy of that. But it seemed like a really interesting book. And then Ryan had two. He was reading The DC Milestone Universe Mm. and The Lamb, The Gospel of Biff. Gospel of Biff. Yeah, that sounds pretty dope. I think we all should probably add that to our libraries, whatever it was about. And then I think that day also I had a book recommendation that I forgot to bring with me, but it's Between the World and Me by ta Coates. Okay. So, yeah. And then, oh, my goodness, we did talk. Uh, I'm trying to remember, like, oh, in order, like, which ones. Because how many, how many episodes did you record in I total? think we did 14. 14. Yeah, 14 this Dang. season. I've got notes, though. You Don't worry hustling. about it. Yeah, you were Trying hustling. to get it in because there was so much going on and so much to talk about. And that's the beauty, I think, of podcasting is, mm. um, especially and not just podcasting. I'm going to go even more granular. Yeah. That's the beauty of Amplified DSM. This network is that Amplified literally gives voice to diverse people who don't just want to say something, but right. who have something to say. Right. And not only do I have something to say, but I want to I want to be able to bring to the fore issues that are that that concern us, but they may not be getting that play in the media like we feel they should. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Or turned down, or you know, maybe it's not um it's not attractive. Right. It's yeah, because a lot of the stuff we talk about isn't very attractive, but right. it's necessary. Um, one of the things that we talked about was the next episode, uh, Talk 15. Um, I think it's attractive. Higher education, going back to school. We talked oh, to, right. yeah, Deshauna Taylor and yeah. Miss Pat, Mama Pat. Yeah, Mama Pat. Uh, Johnson, <laughs> yep. I am a graduate of the Drake University Bright College, and so I brought some of my alumni here to talk with us about what it's like to go back to school after living your life and doing so many other things, hmm. you know, taking that pivot and doing something different. So that was a really cool episode. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I think my takeaway, and I'm going to ask you about your takeaways from that, but sure. my takeaway is, again, like I said, is uh, from Deshana and Miss Pat, that it's never too late to start over, to try again, to pivot. It's never too late. Right. Yeah. Um. Because I remember there was a lot of importance on that, but I remember when she mentioned, um, uh, like, the cultural uh, atmosphere behind it as well. Yeah. That, oh, for that, sure. That made a big impact on, you know, Bright College, right? hmm Yeah. Because I've heard, I've always heard of it, but, you know, I just never really yeah. connected the dots. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Bright College, it was interesting because we were able to kind of set the tone for Mm. our learning environment the professors asked us you know what kind of environment do you want to learn in Mm. and we all had input all of the people in the classroom were able to let their voice be heard share what was important to them and all of those ideas were incorporated into the culture of the classroom yeah so that made it just bomb diggity for everyone you know and pat and deshauna did a great job that's awesome talking about that nice and they shared our book recommendation or their book recommendations miss pat and this is this was so like i was impressed when i first met her two three years ago at the beginning of the bright college experience um she was a 60 plus year old woman okay going back to school you know, yeah. and I just read something like on social media this morning and I, I think I shared the post, but it says something like I'm tired of, you know, 40 and under lists. <laughs> what about the people who are over 40 who are accomplishing big things? And I thought about myself. I thought about Miss Pat and other people yeah. who have made just amazing milestone accomplishments and they're over 40. Right. I feel like as a society, we should recognize that and and like lift those people up and highlight that. So this is my way of doing that for Miss <laughs> Pat and Dee and all the other people out there who are 40 plus. Hell yeah. And Miss Pat, I love her. She turned 70 over the summer. Oh, really? Yeah, she did. She did. Birthday girl. Yeah. All right. Her book recommendation, 
is the Holy Bible. Oh, right. She right. Did I did that. not bring a copy of that <laughs> book <laughs> with me today, but yes. And Deshana's uh, book recommendation is The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Mm. I happen to have a copy of that one. So, yeah. Oh, so, gosh, that was like the first three, four episodes of, of coming back after a hiatus for me. And I remember um, finding my groove. Yeah. By the time we talked to D and Miss Pat about higher education, yeah. I was finding my groove right. and reacquainting with the microphone again after my, my hiatus away. Yeah. How long was your hiatus? It was about maybe nine months nine months yeah nine months away because i was on the book tour oh that's right um i was i started school i think it might have been over a year actually i can't remember but it was a long time sure yeah and I, life was happening yeah and sometimes you have to think about you know priorities and and what you can do your capacity and i realized okay i gotta balance stuff out so i took a break yeah but when i came back and and after those <laughs> first three i was ready i'm like yes we got this and then October happened and the war in Israel broke out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So oh, it was October. Huh? It was October 7th. Dang. Yeah. So the next episode that we did was talk 17 literacy, love and war. Right. And I really felt like I, I guess the the temperature in our community was a little cold and uncertain. People weren't sure what that conflict in Israel was going to mean right. for the United States, what it was going to mean in Iowa. Cause in Iowa, there's a, a robust Jewish community. Mm -hmm. um, and people were just concerned about what to do, what to say, what not to do, what not to say. And so right. me too, I'm thinking, how could I enter this conversation? What's the point of entry for me? And honestly, because I love books so much, a book was my point of entry. Mm. So talk 17 I read excerpts from All About Love by Bell Hooks. And um, as the world was learning of the unfolding conflict in Israel between Hamas and the, the Israeli government, I decided the best thing to do <laughs> would be to read a book about love. Now, not that I was promoting, you know, forgiveness and love and all that. I mean, sure. but it's never a bad idea to love. So for us here who have some distance in the conflict, I said, well, let's just read. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like love and war go together. Sure. I mean, yeah, because th I'd agree. The more I learn about uh, war and disagreement and conflict, love is always somewhere in there, whether it's like fighting because there is a, a, a misused love somewhere, mm -hmm. but it, they, they're connected a in a root. weird way. There's a root it's a root. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that, a root. Mm -hmm. It is. And so Love, War, and Literacy, I think I titled it that way, is because reading and books are the way that I work through things. Sure. So I was like, let me invite our audience to do the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> So that was the the thing I did for that episode and also the book recommendation as well. And then we had the most exciting guest ever after that. Let me guess. Um, Actually, no. Oh, wait. I had I'm another book recommendation for that, too. Yeah, I forgot before we get to that next episode. The other book that I didn't read from but that I um, suggested was The Measure of Our Lives, A Gathering of Wisdom by Toni Morrison. I mean, Toni you can't Morrison. go wrong ever with Toni Morrison. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotta love Toni Morrison. <laughs> Shout out to the ancestors. Hey. Okay. So then after that, Talk 18, uh, A Real Life African Superhero. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lillian Okesh. Okesh. Yeah. Okesh. Okay. Okesh. I hope I'm saying it right. I, I really do. I don't know. I really tried. <laughs> but Lillian, she came on and shared her story as a refugee to the United States. Yeah. Um, and she shared her story from, you know, being born on, in a refugee camp and her family's efforts to get to the United States for a better life. Right. Yeah. I, I was so inspired by her story and uh the the impact her mom had on her yeah uh, that's what stuck with me yeah so i guess she was she when she was talking i thought about my grandmother so i immediately made that 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 link and i'm like man like strong women like underrated yeah i th th thank you yeah thank you for acknowledging <laughs> that because the, it takes i mean 
a strong woman is not the exception mm. to the rule. It is the rule. Mm. Um, no matter if we are acknowledged or if, you know, if, if people realize it, but mm. usually there is a woman um, exerting her strength behind mm. every difficult situation. You'll find a woman somewhere holding the pieces together. Right. And Lillian really paid homage to her mother yeah. for being that example. She, she, she even said that no matter what happened in the refugee camp, yeah. her mom would get up early in the morning yeah. and make sure that there was food. Go get water. Go get water. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. And, and that they had their schooling. Yep. I was just like, yeah, doggone it. I, I think that one was one of the first ones that like really got like, I was like, man, yeah, I saved it. I, I remember saving that episode in my, like on my favorites. So, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lillian <laughs> made Abraham's favorites. <laughs> yes. We we're going to drink to that. I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> to the faves. So yeah, Lillian, um, I know that she is doing amazing work. She has a nonprofit mm -hmm. and a, a, a her company. Own business. Yeah, her own business. And yeah. she's impacting the lives of so many people who are also refugees in our community. Yeah. She's a go getter. And I feel like um, that is that is a way for us uh, as a as a diaspora of African people who are scattered about all mm. over the city, the community, the world yeah. that we should connect and get together yeah. just because we have different stories or we come from different places. It doesn't mean we can't connect. So right. let's get together. Yeah. I love Lillian for that. Oh, yeah. And she is an author as well. And her book recommendation was um, the book that she wrote the spirit of warriors. Mm. I'm really impressed by her. And she also wrote a children's book called Ageno that I didn't bring with me today, but I have a copy of it. So get her books, y'all get Lillian O'Ketch's books, um, the spirit of warriors and Ageno, the children's book. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lillian, just a force, <laughs> a force. It says conceived in Sudan, born in Uganda, discovered in America. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So after that, I think it was after that episode, we yeah. were in the studio after we wrapped and you were playing. No, it was before that episode oh, began. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at, before we got Lillian on the air, I walked in the studio and you were playing gospel music. Gospel music. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Abraham, what do you know about gospel music? What do you know about gospel music? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a confession to make. Yeah. Um, and even cause when you had your guests in here, cause they asked, Oh, what song was it? And I wasn't, uh, it wasn't Kirk Franklin. It was actually a, a Kanye West, uh, Sunday service. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, I and loved I'm it like, though. If I say this, I don't know. I'm like, I'm going to get judged or like, no, they're going to look not. at me funny. <laughs> Heck no. But it was Kanye West Sunday service and like, you know, live, live versions of so. Um, but yeah. And I'll be grooving to that. Like, you know. <laughs> I, I love I love gospel I really do. And what is it about gospel that you like so much? I think it, it goes back to to roots as because I grew up in the church right, mm -hmm. um, and we would see other um, other ministries uh, practicing or playing music, you know, and one of them was you know with the with the the gospel, and they would just they would just blow everybody else out of the water, <laughs> and it was. Oh man, it was cool, and you know, being exposed to that as a young kid, especially if you love music, yeah. Um, so that one, def the the gospel episode, hands down, uh, I'd say is my favorite. Like, I I was loving it, and I was I was just a, a sponge. I was just soaking it all in. Everything you guys were talking about, it was just like man, like you know, like. Yeah. yeah, well, you were the inspiration for that episode because <laughs> I was like, we ought to celebrate gospel music if you like it. And I love it because I grew up in the church, too. Yeah. Um, and I was a choir director for like 25 years. Wow. Um, so I was like, yeah, we have to do an episode yeah. celebrating gospel and music. And you guys, I think you guys need to do a follow up because <laughs> it was so short. And yeah, there's never so enough time. It was so short. And there was, I feel like there was a lot of good stuff that was said. And I, I can tell you guys had way more to talk about. For so. sure. Yeah. Yeah, we will do a follow up. Uh, our guests that day were Sarah McIntosh, Jeray Lindsay, and Kenneth Cameron. Mm -hmm. They um, are all musically inclined, uh, you know, whether it's 
musicianship or vocalizing or songwriting they kind of represented the gamut of gospel music right um and we talked about the the real deal like you know yeah behind the curtains of church a choir politics. church politics yeah. all of it yeah and it was a great episode and i did i remember saying you know we got to have you guys come back and for sure we will oh yeah we will we yeah. definitely will do that oh yeah so their book recommendations let us see here did I skip some? Did the I Bible like did the Bible some. make any, any of those ones? The Bible did. did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized that I did skip an episode, so I'm gonna rewind after this. Okay, cool. But the book recommendations for that episode celebrating gospel music, um, Kenneth uh recommended reposition yourself. Okay. Sarah recommended the Holy Bible. Nice. The Bible's a popular <laughs> book recommendation around here. It's a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeray recommended the twelve rules for life. Well, so, rules for life. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it was really dope. And then I think uh, I uh, I asked them all to sing. So if you all um, haven't <laughs> caught that episode, go and and listen to Talk Nineteen. Mm-hmm. And at the end, there's a surprise because there's a couple of songs on there that they are sitting in studio singing, and yeah. they sung their faces off. These people could sing. Oh yeah, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So I accidentally skipped one. Talk okay. sixteen okay. was so. Awesome for me. It was the natural hair episode. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and the lock link with Tabby G. Okay. Yeah, Tabitha and Shanita. Nita locked it southward. Okay. Yeah, they're two locticians uh, here in Des Moines. Um, really popular with people with natural hair, mm. and uh, they had an event called the Lock Link Up. Okay. And so because Shanita had been locking my hair, I said, let's let's take this conversation That's so cool. to a wider audience. Yeah. yeah. And I remember uh they were talking about the the uh cultural assumptions behind people who have dreadlocks right. and who wear their hair naturally. Yeah. You know, people assume that these people like me, you know, I I, I have locks in my hair. Yeah. But the assumption is that People who have locks smoke weed or that they're lazy or that their hair is dirty. That kind of thing. Criminal. Criminal. Sure. Yeah, all of that. And so they helped us dispel some of those myths. Right. It was a really great episode. And I heard that the lock link up was a wild success. They had hundreds of people at the park who showed up. Games for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. It was really nice um, for them to come on and and talk about that. That, See, and even just listening in on that one, um, like from other cultures, like for me, for example, like I would have never th- think of these things or, you know, from your guys' perspective. So that one was a, a huge, like, cultural open door. Like, yeah. You know, so that was cool to see and, and, and you know, listen in on. Yeah. And two, I think uh, because they aren't from the Midwest. Mm. Well, I mean, technically Tabby G is, but Chicago is a little different flavor than sure. Iowa. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't re- really want to count that as the same. <laughs> right. Uh, but they have a different understanding and different experiences when it comes to, to natural hair and being um, being able to be authentically who you are in your community. Mm. And, and how vastly different it is here. So it was really it was really great. I think my biggest takeaway from that episode, uh, those ladies said, you know, don't be afraid to be who you are. Yeah. Natural hair is seen as defiant and rebellious, um, but it's authentic. Right. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Yeah. Yep. And their book recommendations, um, Tabby G recommended I Love My Hair. And Shanita... <coughs> Uh, she was reading a book called Butterfly. Okay. Yeah. Butterfly. So, butterfly. Yeah. Very nice. Really interesting. Really interesting ladies. Um, one quick in this, I thought about this. Mm-hmm. So they did an interview with uh, Denzel Washington. Are you running low on wine, Abraham? I Let might, me fill I you might up. Be a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Courtney, how you doing <laughs> over there? We're celebrating today. <laughs> okay. There we go. Thank you. Oops. Um, Denzel's doing an interview and then they, they asked him something about culture, right? Yeah. And a very generic question. And then he responds with, you know, if, you know, Steven Spielberg would have done Goodfellas Mm. or, you know, instead of Martin Scorsese or if, you know, uh, some other director, um, and he, he made the point of like they all, those directors would have made, you know, pretty good movies about Goodfellas, but, um, with Martin Scorsese understanding the culture of like, you know, of how, you know, that, that, that culture and the family, how they were brought up, you know, and then he kind of flipped the, um, flipped the sides a bit, you know, and then he's like, if, 
you know, Quentin Tarantino would have done uh, the, the film about fences, you know? Yeah. He's like that would have been weird. There would have been oh my he's god. He's like they probably would have. He's <laughs> like they would have been. They would have been good films, but they would have missed the mark of like you know they don't know uh, you know how Sunday morning getting prepped you know and that smell in the air you know yeah whatever you know is is it's not the same thing. So there's you know a misbalance of un- understanding that culture. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that makes me think of. Um, I just saw Goodfellas the other day. I was okay. sitting at home yeah. and I, w- I went to Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I went to Tubi because I was like, I was bored. It was over the weekend. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was You're like relaxing. Tubi and chilling yeah. or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and Goodfellas was like in the recommended thing, mm-hmm. the section. And so I said, heck yeah, let me watch Goodfellas. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Then for some reason, I don't know the way my mind works yeah. is it can be bizarre. Right. Um, as it should. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, d- let's drink to that. Bizarre <laughs> minds. Woo. Okay. So as I'm sitting there watching Goodfellas, I'm thinking about Andre 3000 on the flutes with this new album. Oh, right. And yeah. it occurred to me cause the day before I had watched Idlewild. Okay, okay. Yes. I'm a movie. I love movies. Okay. So I watched Idlewild and as I'm watching this movie again for like the fifth time, it occurs to me that, if we watch these movies with an open mind, we can really see what's coming. Because <laughs> if you watch Idlewild, then you know some kind of way the flutes are coming. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't a surprise to me yeah. that this man is on the flute. And so I'm like, what am I gleaning from Goodfellas? And I really didn't <laughs> glean anything that deep. But, yeah, it's it's about that cultural understanding of what you produce right. comes out of the culture that you're in. Yeah. Which which leads us to talk twenty. I like it. Black Iowa News. Oh yeah, making a difference. That's a good one. This is Dana James, the publisher and founder of Black Iowa News, coming out of the African American culture with news about the African American culture. Mm. So it's really interesting that you brought that up about nice. you know being connected to the culture gives you a point of entry into the storytelling about it. Right. And so she um, decided during the pandemic. And the 2020 uprisings right. and social justice movement to produce uh, a publication that would tell our story and get the word out about COVID, uh, the COVID impact on Black people locally. And so, nice. This is her newspaper. I don't know if it'll sit up here on the stand, but it's Black Iowa News. It's a quarterly publication, a literal, actual newspaper. Yeah. Um, that celebrates. Um, black stories and sheds light on like disparity and struggle and challenges. And, but but it, it's, it's, it's good. It's not right. all negative. Yeah. And so she came on and talked with us about her work and I thought, wow, local media is important. Yeah. Black media is important. Latino media is important. You know, everybody needs to have their stories told. Yeah. And, and, her mission so aligns with the work that Amplified DSM does too. Right. I found such value in that conversation. The thing that stuck out to me was um, she she really, s- like, stuck to her guns. Yeah. And then when she talked about how uh, her, her employer, with the whole, it was going around um, with the George Floyd uh, event at that time, how her employer was kind of, you know, opposite on the other yeah, end. Yeah, he said instead of, you know, acknowledging that black lives matter and they count and yeah. are valued, he sent out the the email or whatever across the company that all lives matter. Right. And she was like, I quit. Yeah. I'm like, she's that, a badass. That, <laughs> no, yeah. That takes some, yeah, sticking to your guns like that because not everybody does that. Yeah. Not everybody. So to have that, I don't know, that internal moral compass to, you know what, like, I'll do this on my own. Like, oh, man. Like, yeah. What a badass indeed. Yeah, she's awesome. And. I encourage everybody in our listening audience to go to Black Iowa News, find them online, and get this paper. Subscribe, uh, be a supporter, um, because that's how newspapers survive is through our support and our readership and our diligence. Um, And then she messed around and put out a holiday gift guide. (laughs) (laughs) So if you are still looking for gifts for the holidays, uh, Dana has a holiday gift guide full nice. of products made by made or created or produced by black people locally. That's cool. Yeah. All across the state. So it's really awesome. 
this is the holiday gift guide. I'm, it's not going to stay up there. I'm going to hold it. But <laughs> yeah. And it's available all over the city, all over the state. So you could find a gift for someone. I mean, they have stuff in here. I mean, granted. And okay. I kind of want to look at that. You do? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll share my copy with you. Shameless plug, uh, Omari's Big Tree is on the <laughs> second page. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of gifts from everywhere. So there, that's your copy. You can have that. Nice. Abraham. Thank you. The, yeah. Uh, we subscribe to the digital one. On, oh, online good. Too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Digital, mm -hmm. uh, paper, every every kind of way that you could get this publication is available. So Dana James is amazing. Um, again, the importance of local media and making sure that every voice is heard. So we appreciate you, Dana. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, after that, we talked to a really cool guy in Talk 21 about an organization called Dads on a Mission. His name is Lance Williams. And what struck me the most about Lance is he is so, like, honest and sincere mm -hmm. about changing the lives of young people and working with families. And he dispelled some myths too, because the, the myth is one of the myths around black families is that black dads are not there. Right. But he, he kind of changed the game. You know, he let it be known that while that is true, it is in, in, in some regard, it's true in some regard in every culture. Yeah. And what is even more profound is that, by and large, black dads are available to their children. They are in their children's lives. Yeah. They are at home supporting their families. So mm -hmm. it was it was great to have him on. Um, he said black fathers are present and accounted for. Right. Yeah. I wasn't here for that episode, but mm. I saw some of the reels. I'm like, man, like this guy wears his, his heart his heart on his sleeve. So yeah. that was pretty cool. I mean, he was so vulnerable. He shared. I, I hope you go back and, and watch these episodes and listen to Lance's story he talks about and really opens up about his health struggles and the fact that um being diagnosed with a kidney disorder or a liver disorder some type of yeah, health challenge yeah you know it made him really want to be um a more involved dad not that he wasn't before sure but he realized that time, time. is not on our side yeah you know we have a limited amount of time in this life and what is it going to take for us to be the best we can for our families. Right. Yeah. So that was, it was so impressive. So impressive. So support his organization, Dad's on a Mission. Dad's on a Mission. Yeah. And his, uh, he had a, a, book, a couple of book re recommendations. And also, let me not forget Dana's book recommendations, although she has Black Iowa News yeah. and the Holiday Gift Guide. She brought a book called Nigga Theory. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I hope that, you get that book, guys, because <laughs> <laughs> it's on it's on its way to me. It's been ordered. So Nick Theory was Dana's. And Lance's Lance book, uh, he had two book recommendations. Okay. One was Relationship Goals, and the other was Eight Conversations to Have with Your Son. And that's by a local author, John Martin. Okay. So, yeah, those are great books. And, okay, so we get to Talk 22, and we had a charismatic – outspoken businesswoman mina jones come on oh. uh because she uh was telling us what's wrong with our city yeah. so literally that episode is called what's wrong with black des moines because <laughs> <laughs> you know we got problems just like every other community of course um but i had seen uh, mina's post on social media where she was literally going off about you know, being misrepresented and the community not really counting to people who utilize, you know, black people as a reason to excel or advance or get funding for sure. their for their endeavors. Sure. And she was just saying, you know what, if you're going to use black people's struggles to fund your organizations, oh. then you need to allow those same people to benefit when it's time to, you know, benefit. Yeah. Yeah, because there was a there's a gap between, you know, the service that people say they're providing yep. and the people that actually need the service. It looks good. It looks good on paper. It looks paper. good on the website. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, the <laughs> website, the freaking websites. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. And I remember, you know, that conversation was so strong because Mina expressed the things that most people are thinking but they don't either they either they don't have an outlet for it yeah. or they're afraid to say it to say it yeah yeah, 
Yeah. Ooh, so we need we need more of those people. We sure do. Yeah. She's a gem. I appreciate <laughs> her. And I asked her, you know, at the end of the episode, you know, we're on here ranting. Yeah. We could rant all day long. Yeah. But <laughs> when it comes down to it at the end of the day, what is the call to action? Right. And I remember she said, just be black. Huh. I'm like, dang it. Huh. Yeah. Be black, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was awesome. And her book recommendation was The Unapologetic Guide to Black Mental Health. Nice. Yeah. And then we were beginning to wind up the season. Yeah. And we get to We're in the we're in the fourth quarter here. The the fourth quarter. Um we get to um some more understanding about the Israel Hamas war because by this time, okay. you know, the the news is really giving us what they're giving us and yeah. people are wanting to talk about it yeah. and not understanding ways that they could talk about it in a way that was productive. Right. And so I said, okay, let's do an episode yeah. and devote it completely to understanding the Israel Hamas yep. conflict. Yep. And so I invited a friend of mine, <laughs> Michael Libby, um, who is a Jewish American on, and that was talk 23 man. And I tell you what, <laughs> Michael Libby is a talk show host, um, an international speaker, um, a politician. Great voice. Great voice. Okay, (laughs) the voice, right? He's like the white Barry White. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a voice for you. But he he came on and he shared his perspective, and it was pro-Israel. Right. Pro-Israel, to be expected, you know. Uh, a man of a, with a Jewish background, and right. he's also a rabbi. Yeah. Um, but some of his uh, some of his opinions <laughs> did not resonate well. They were aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. And so we got some flack. Yeah, we did from our audience. Yes, we did. Can you talk about what you what some of that feedback we I got? Would, I would love to. Um, well, for the the first thing uh, is like with us, like we had your back. And even just talking about it and, like, bringing it to, you know, open air for, you know. Yeah. Like, that's brave. Like, that's brave in itself to do already because not everybody's going to do that. Um, let alone just to have, like, a, a, you know, a platform to understand. And you, you mentioned that in the episode, like, how do we bring this forward so we can understand, you know, one perspective so that was a tricky rabbit hole, and uh, you know we 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 commend you for doing that because not everybody does that, and we definitely got a lot of heat from that. Um, that being said, we were behind you the whole time, like, uh, and and, and in a way, it, it's kind of funny, um, cause like we it was just the comment section was just going off. Oh, the comments know. were yeah. so sad. I mean, I get it. <laughs> This is the thing for me, like, it's okay. It, it's You say it's brave. I think it's necessary, right? Sure, yeah. We have to have these tough conversations yeah. in our society. Yeah. But I think understanding that not everybody is going to agree with us. Yes. No one agree. If you agree with everybody yeah. all the time, right. something is really, really wrong. Something's wrong. So to have a conversation with someone that you may not agree with is how we get to a place of understanding, even if we continue to disagree. Yeah. And so I was really proud of Amplified for putting out the statement. And I want to read the statement. Okay, please do. Okay. So because we got so much feedback that (laughs) was just like, I was, okay, I was shocked by the feedback. Right. Yeah. Disagree with the guy for saying what he says. Sure. But don't shut down. Yeah. That's that's ending the conversation before right. it gets started. Yeah. So I was really proud of Amplified for putting out this statement. In the wake of recent events, Amplified is dedicated to the principles of free speech and open conversations. We embrace diverse opinions, encourage respectful disagreement, and fearlessly navigate difficult discussions. We do not endorse the views, the, the political views of our guests or hosts. Amplified strives to encourage open dialogue, moving diverse opinions to the forefront of our conversations. Thank you to all our supporters. And I think after Michael Libby came on and he was pro-Israel and he shared his personal views, yeah. that turned some listeners off and they decided to unfollow. Right. Which is disappointing for me because I think had they kept listening, sure. they would have got a balanced understanding yeah. of what we what what we are trying to do, what I'm trying to do sure. is give voice to 
either side and then make a decision at that point. Don't cut off before we're done. Sure. You know. And, and one thing I will say to that is obviously, you know, we pick the uh, the juiciest parts, I guess you could say, or, you know, so that'll get attention. Um, but the real important thing is you got to consider the, the context. And like you said, the whole entire episode is you were introducing the – it was a healthy discussion because it, it – it, I don't, it wasn't really one-sided, but you were trying to understand, you know, what he was trying to say. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, yeah, yeah. So after all of that, Talk 24, we continued the conversation, but this time we invited um, pro-Palestinian. Uh, Pro-Palestine. Yeah, yeah, that perspective. Yeah. Oh, and let me circle back real quick and share Michael's uh, book recommendations. Yes. Because he's a rabbi and a Jewish American, his book recommendation is uh, the Torah. Oh, okay. He yeah. did say that, yeah. Yep. And then I shared mine, which was Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. And so the the the, the next episode was Talk 24. We had uh, Sammy El Baruti and Maria Reves with a pro-Palestine perspective. Yep. Um, they gave a whole different view. Basically, their episode completely was the opposite uh, viewpoint of Michael Libby's. And I think that, again, created a balanced yeah. uh, conversation. I just wish more people would have, well, the people that dropped off, I wish they had held on for that. Sure. Because I think they would have, again, gained a broader, better understanding. Right. Um, so, yeah, free speech is everything. Yeah. Listen to people, even if you disagree. Yeah. And be willing be willing to be disagreed with. Not everybody is going to believe the same way that you believe. Yeah. And yeah. you don't, I don't know, I, you don't get anywhere with that, you know. It's, yeah. It's never-ending circle, so. It is. Um, and Maria, she was awesome, very passionate. Um, she spent time in, in Gaza mm -hmm. with people that she cares about. And she recommended a ton of books. She actually <laughs> sent me via email a list of like a page long <laughs> of books. Um, I chose two of them that she mentioned on the episode to share with people today. Um, on Palestine is one. And the other book that she recommended is Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. I believe that's the one written by uh, former President Jimmy Carter. Okay. And then Sammy, he recommended a couple of books, one of which is Kindred by Octavia Butler and um, one that he read for fun. So it's unrelated to the war. Okay. But it's uh, John Carter, Warlord of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs, okay. which I thought was really cool. Nice. And I appreciate them for all three of them for coming on, talking about yeah. their views on the war at great risk to them because we are in a polarized society Definitely. Um, that doesn't always um, value in, 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 I won't say doesn't always value, but, but, Freedom of speech is great until someone is free to speak, right? <laughs> you know, and then yeah. we get mad. But yeah. so, yeah, thank you um, all for those uh, those guests and and for our listeners for um, joining us in that conversation. Uh, and it's a conversation that will continue. And then our last episode before today um, was Talk 25. Uh, black mental health and coping with holiday stress. Oh, that's right, with Bri yeah, Brianna. With Brianne Ward. Brianne. Yeah, she's really cool. She's a, a mental health professional um, <laughs> and the CEO and founder of Forward Consulting LLC. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess for me, that that's the point at which, you know, we're in the holiday season and I wanted her to help us navigate how to survive the holidays <laughs> <laughs> and preserve our mental health. And she did that. She um, She gave us like three tips to, to, to preserve our mental health <laughs> while we're like enjoying our family and loved ones. And I thought, wow, we're going to make it. We'll survive. Yeah. So watch that episode. Cause it's, it was dope. And I do want to say that if you're struggling, if you're out there and you're struggling and you're experiencing some type of mental health dilemma, there is a pathway forward for you. Um, you can reach out to a professional like Brianne Ward. Um, you can always uh, call for help utilizing the suicide and crisis hotline by dialing 988 there is help for you so don't give up don't give up Brianne had a couple of book recommendations too one was um your purpose is calling and the other is out of the fire and then mine 
my book recommendation is this one. Stay Woke, A Meditation Guide for the Rest of Us by Justin Michael Williams. So that was mine. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The season finale yeah. of Black and Privileged in America podcast, <laughs> season three. I like it. Yeah. Can you believe it? It's, <laughs> man, I mean, yes and no, because you were busy, but this kind of came quick. I you feel know? like it did come quick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We've journeyed through so many incredible stories and conversations. It's been an absolute roller coaster yeah. of shared moments. Yeah. What's your final word? Um, I w- actually, I would like to know your, uh, like your arc, like where are you at on your podcast journey? Like, um, cause obviously you had some, some, some good combos for, for me. Like I, I tell some people this, uh, but like I'm a fly on the wall. So <laughs> when people come in and record, I'm just listening. And I, f- I feel like I know you. More than you know me, obviously, but because hearing you talk and stuff, it's like, um, I'm just like, man, like, yeah, I'm going to make a great point, you know, or whatever. Um, You're so kind. Thank you. So <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like, and some some podcast episode or podcasters who come in like, you know, it, maybe it, it's not, you know, it's different topics, you know, it could be yeah. whatever. But whenever you come in, I look forward to it because I'm OK, I'm going to learn something, you know. Oh, wow. So that means a lot to me. Thank yeah, you. No. Yeah. That's kind of my point is to create an opportunity for people to learn and be in community and really get an understanding of stuff that they may hear about or think about. But it's it's not get like I said earlier, it may not be getting that play that they need. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the arc for me is to keep going and mm-hmm. build and be better and better. Nice. Yeah. Like it. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you who have tuned in, whether you've been with us from the beginning or joined the ride midway. Your support and encouragement mean the world to us. Without you, this podcast wouldn't be what it is today. As we wrap up this season, I encourage you to reflect on the stories we've shared, the lessons we've learned, and the connections we've made. Our community is stronger because of your presence, and I'm genuinely grateful for the conversations that we've had together. We're already gearing up for an incredible season four, and trust me, it's going to be bigger and better than ever. We've got some exciting guests, thought-provoking topics, and maybe a few surprises up our sleeves. So until we meet again for the next season, stay curious, take care of yourselves, and keep those hearts and minds open. And stay locked in with me on my website, www.abanasankofa.com. This is Black and Privileged in America podcast, and I'm your host, Abana Sankofa, signing off for now. Today we went down memory lane, and oh, how wonderful season three has been. Sending so much love to our amazing media team at Amplified DSM, Abraham and Courtney. Shout out to our sponsor, Infinite Resources, and huge thanks to all of you, our listening audience, for being a part of the Black and Privileged in America family. Happy New Year. Thanks for listening and see you in season four. This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates in central Iowa companies. Amplified.